Hi everybody, I just wanted to make a short extension to my previous tutorial to show you how you can transform the custom slider that I made in Webflow with a custom code into a carousel-like slider. So again, same setup, but uh, when I use the arrows, it will turn out like that and scale the image in the middle. And uh, when you reach the end, it still have the behavior of looping back to the first one. And same thing goes the other way around. Okay, so the main difference between a normal slider and a carousel is the ability to preview the previous and the next slide. So it means that one slide is actually one third of the parent slide wrapper instead of being 100% like in the previous example. Okay, so if we have a look to what is one slide, one slide is actually one third of its parents, so the slides wrapper. And that way you can display three inside of the slide wrapper, but because it's still set to don't shrink, the rest will overflow out of it. Okay, so if I take my slides wrapper to show you what happened when you transform it, because remember this is the element I used to transform the stripe of slides. So I can show you the overall stripe just by moving from left to right in percent. So here you have a duplicate of the second slide, a duplicate of the third one, the actual first slide, the actual second slide, the actual third one, and after you have a duplicate of the first one and a duplicate of the second one. Because there's three slides in the initial state as well, it will be the same. This is not minus 100% to be on the first slide, but it's actually one third. So 33.33333, yeah. So here is the position to be on the actual first slide. All the rest is about how you set up things in interactions. To set up interaction for the carousel-like slider, it's pretty similar to the previous tutorial. To show you the differences, I'm just going to jump into the carousel to slide one animation. The first difference is because one slide is not taking 100% of the parent, but is actually taking one third, remember this is the flex item, I'm going to have to move the slide wrapper, transform it, by increment of one third. So the position of the first slide will be minus one third, minus 33.3% instead of being minus 100%. The second slide would be minus two third, and the third slide will be minus three third or minus 100%. For the loop effect, you will have to go all the way to four third or 133.333 etc. percent. And for the other side, you will have to go to zero percent or zero third. The next thing is the scale. In the context of slide one, I want the previous and the next slides to be scaled down and I want the slide one to be full scale. So in the animation, I'm setting up on the class slide one content, a transform scale of one and on slide two content and slide three content, 0 0.6. I'm also adding the easing and the duration that is similar to the slides wrapper transform. That way everything is synced. Don't forget as well to add the initial state for the slide contents classes. Same thing will go for a carousel to slide two, of course, without the initial states, but you will have the transform that will go to two, minus two third, and you will have the slide one content that will be 0.6, slide two that will be one, and slide three that will be 0.6. Here you go, you got a custom carousel slider made in Webflow without any custom code. You can still use the buttons to go to a specific slide and you also can use the arrow to go to the next or previous slide. And if you reach the end, that will loop back to the beginning. I hope you enjoyed this little extension for the previous tutorial. Uh, if you're a bit confused about how I made this slider and how it works, uh, just make sure to watch the first video. That's where I explain the concept that I'm using and all the structure of the project. Otherwise, if you got any question, just be sure to leave them in the comments. I'm always here to help. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.